going to I'm just going to run through some of the the principles um, around uh, good wintering management. And so there are three key things to do this winter. Uh, that's looking after your stock in terms of animal welfare, uh, making sure that you minimise your environmental losses. Um, and so that's in terms of reducing your nutrient uh, losses, sediment, um, phosphorus, uh, nitrogen and E. coli. Um, and the third thing, as Marie has just outlined, is to make sure that you've got a, a, a documented um, winter grazing plan. And so that's a really key part of what we're um, promoting this, this winter. Next slide, Maria. Uh, so in terms of um, in terms of looking after your stock, um, there you've got to make sure that you're you're providing adequate um, food. Um, you've got um, access to to water and to shelter for the animals, uh, and then making sure that you're providing a comfortable lying area. That's really important, and Dawn's going to cover that later in the presentation. Um, and also making sure that your animals are healthy on crop. So that's making sure that you've got um, you've had a really good transition period onto the crop and also making sure that um, you're not having any birthing, any calving or lambing um, onto that crop um, and making sure the animals are well off um, the crop paddock by the time they are birthing. Next slide, Bruce McMahon. Uh, so in terms of the environmental side of things, uh, waterways and critical source areas um, are, are a really key part of um, making sure that they're looked after over winter. So in terms of waterways, um, you need to make sure that you've got large um, vegetated buffers and um, the stock should be excluded from those buff areas. So one of, we want to make sure that the, the animals are kept as far away as, as possible from, from the waterways. And this should be at least, a, um, at least five metres. Um, and then in terms of when, when you're in a paddock that has got a slope, uh, that should be, that buff area should increase in size um, with the slope. So as you've got an increasing um, size of that buffer area. Uh, critical source areas, and I'll, in the next few slides, I'll, I'll cover what critical source areas are, just as a recap for, for anyone that doesn't know what they are. But essentially, they're those sort of areas in, um, in a paddock that can get wet um, uh, at, at various times where the flow accumulates, and they'll have ephemeral flow or just little, um, little waterways that pop up temporarily. And so oftentimes, there's sort of gullies or swales um, that can be in a paddock. Um, and they can also transport um, sediment and nutrients from that paddock. So you've essentially got uh, the accumulation of flow and there's also, um, so that's able to remove um, sediment and nutrients from a paddock. And also you've got the accumulation of um, sediment that will often often end up in those areas. Um, so where possible, we want, would like you to um, make sure that those areas um, stay uncultivated um, and they're left with some sort of vegetation um, in there. Um, critical source areas can also include other things such as laneways and culverts and bridges, and those little hotspot areas um, that where, where you can get nutrient loss to a waterway. Next slide, please, Maria. Uh, so I've just got a few examples here of uh, critical source areas. So you can see the critical source area is that little wet um, patch running through there. And so that's um, been after there's some rainfall, and so that's highlighted now. Um, just to, to make that a bit clearer for you. And so those are the areas where you'll get that, um, that ephemeral or temporary flow coming through, um, coming through and help in removing those um, sediments and contaminants. Um, there's another one on the next slide, Maria. So you can see this is a, a picture of a critical source area. So this, is, this paddock is still in crop and you can see it highlighted there. So that's a little low lying area. And so when there's, when there's a significant amount of rainfall or a large enough rainfall event, that will then, um, that will then uh, get wet and you'll have um, flow moving across the land um, and overland flow um, in that area. Uh, we'll go on to the next slide, please, Maria. Um, so in terms of uh, um, other, other management things that can be done, um, strategic directional grazing is a really, uh, a really important part. And so you can see in the picture there, there's the critical source area, um, the little gully area down the bottom. And the, the idea would be to start the brakes in, in this particular paddock would be to start the brakes up as high as you can and start moving them um, towards, uh, towards that critical source area. And that basically provides, um, it starts off with a really large buffer area and then um, over, over the course of the winter, as your brakes move in, um, that will help, help make sure that the, um, that the crop paddock, um, the soil um, 
the soil structure remains open and that can absorb any overland flow so that and then that will leave behind any any sediment um, and phosphorus um, behind and then so you get the flow going um, through through the soil rather than flowing across as overland flow um, so there's been some research done at this um, into this at, uh, in, at Telford and it's shown that the, that the um, that the nutrient um, and sediment losses can be reduced by about 80 percent um, if this is done if these practices are done um, also it's best to keep your soil and nutrients um, on the paddock where they're going to be productive rather than going down into a, a waterway next slide uh, there's some other great uh, wintering um, management principles um, that can be used here in terms of back fencing so where that's appropriate um, it's really good to back fence and do that reasonably regularly and that helps reduce the movement of animals and remobilizing any sediment um, and soil that, um, that it will reduce that disturbance um, and that will help um, reduce damage to soils as well. Uh, in terms of portable troughs, um, they're a really good um, way to make sure that the animals have, have access to clean, um, clean fresh water. Um, but they do need to be put in an area of a paddock um, where it's just, we, we call that a safe area of a paddock where you're going to be able to reduce those um, where, where there's no where there's you're minimizing the chances of um, any losses to uh, waterways or um, from those areas so they're, they're usually well away from waterways um, supplementary feeders that's a great way to also um, to make sure that you get good utilization of any supplementary feed in there but they also need to be put away um, well away from waterways and critical source areas to be really effective um, and then in terms of catch crops and dawn will cover cover this later as well um, in a lot more in a bit more depth um, but basically a catch crop is, is sown as soon as you possibly can after the animals have come off and they, they, they with the idea that the crop will, will grow and oftentimes it might be for example winter oats um, and they will go. They, they will start growing and and soak up some of the um, the nitrogen that's been left in the soil, and so they're a great way of reducing um, nitrate leaching. Next slide, please, Maria. So just uh, in terms of uh, um, just to sum up, there uh, we've got those good management principles. So um, the key thing is make sure you've got a, a winter grazing plan and make sure that's written down. Um, and then making sure we're looking after animal welfare, keeping the animals healthy while they're on crop and while they're transitioning onto the crop, uh, making sure they've got adequate um, food, um, water and shelter, and also making sure they've got a comfortable lying area and that there's not going to be any birthing uh, onto the, into those crop paddocks. Making sure that we protect those waterways and critical source areas are really important. Um, and making sure that um, to, to reducing your, your nutrient and sediment losses and also to helping um, keep um, keeping your soil structure intact. Uh, strategic directional grazing is a really great uh, management um, in terms of making sure that you're staying as far, or starting your winter grazing as far away as possible from those, um, from those critical source areas and waterways and moving towards them. And then thinking about using back fencing, portable troughs, and safe um, supplement feeding areas. And also post grazing, um, you can use those catch crops uh, where they're appropriate. And so, just to reiterate, um, yeah, make sure that you've got that winter grazing plan written down, a really key step.